Hello, my name's Joshua, I'm from Barnes College and today I'm going to show you some sound design techniques using Audacity. So I'm going to start just by recording my voice, like that. And on the right here you can change what speed you want the playback to be at. So I've put it right to the bottom here, let's give that a listen. So you can create some interesting effects there. If I speed it up slightly, so you can create some kind of monster or or bad guy voice with that. Uh, if you speed it up, you get a kind of chipmunk effect. Um, now this is only temporary, this thing on the right. If you actually wanted to change your audio, what you have to do is select it, go to effect and then click on change speed and then you can change it with this slider here. Uh, you can also change it to the various vinyl settings um, using these options here. Now, in this project here, I've imported some various location sounds, which I happen to have. This first one here is a sustained piano note. Now, if I wanted that to sustain for longer, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this bit here, which is roughly at the same volume. I'm then going to copy it and paste it right next to it. Now it, this won't quite fit in because it's louder at one end than it is at the other so I'm going to use the effect of a reverse to make that transition more smooth. You can do this with other audio to make your sound longer. Uh, if you experience a clip in this middle bit uh, what you'll have to do is to remember to select it from a zero crossing point. Now a zero crossing point is where the waveform meets the zero line. So an example would be here to, to here. It won't be these bits which are off the line but the bits are exactly on the line. Uh, when those two are connected up then you won't get a clip. My next sound is of some keys rattling. I can change this in a number of ways. Uh, I'm just going to try out what changing the speed of it does. If I slow the speed down it sounds something like this. So that doesn't sound like keys, it sounds more like heavy chains moving around. Or what I could do to completely change the sound would be to use the phaser, which is also under the effects bar. Let's see what this sounds like. I think we can get a different sound out of that, so I'm just going to play around with some of the settings and see which I can, what I can get. So yeah, let's go for that. That is one way of completely changing an analog sound into a digital effect. My next sound is of some bowls. Now I want these to sound like a bell so I'm going to select this one here and cut out the rest by using the trim tool here. I'm going to zoom in using this one. Uh, first I'm going to compress it to get the most out of the sound which I've got. Okay, You can see that the waveform's got a bit bigger there. Next I want the sound to last for a longer period of time. So I'm going to go to effects and then change speed. I want to slow down the speed so that it lasts for a longer time. Okay. Let me zoom out. You can see this has changed the length of it. Um, let's give that a listen. Changing the speed has also changed the pitch of it. 
uh, which is good because that's the kind of bell which I'd like. Uh, next I'm going to put a bit of reverb on it to make it sound a bit re more real. So I'm going to go to effect and then use this G verb here. There's plenty of op options in here. I want it to be in a large room with quite a large decay. So let's listen to that. That sounds good. So let's apply that. Um, now, as you can see, I haven't quite selected enough here, so the sound stops abruptly. So what I'm going to do is select all of this and then use fade out. And then that gives me a good decay. So let's listen to that. That sounds good. My next sound is of a train going past. Now I'm going to manipulate its dynamics a bit using this envelope tool. I'm going to create a point here, 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 and here. And make it a bit louder in the middle and a bit quieter towards the edges. Right, now that I've done that, I'm going to make it into a stereo piece. At the moment it's only a mono track, but what I'd like it to do would to have the train go from left to right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this track and then paste it onto a new one. Here we go, now I've got two tracks. Uh, now I'm going to pan this one all the way to the left and this one all the way to the right. Uh, to aid the stereo space of it, what I'm going to do is slightly time shift the right hand track so it's a bit delayed. Let's give that a listen. Now, I haven't quite got a stereo effect at the moment, I've just got an echo in each speaker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this second track here and reverse it. And then I'm going to time shift it so that it's roughly in the same place, but slightly afterwards. Let's give that a listen. Now to put these into a stereo track, what I'm going to do is click on this arrow here and then click make stereo track and then it always does it with the track that's beneath. So if I click that, then I now have my one stereo track which I need to remember to put back into the middle so then that plays as a stereo track. <laughs> 